after listening to this podcast for a year, I'm going to forget about a Jeep. They what? have so many issues. <laughs> I mean, what total piles of junk? My 99 Corolla has 230,000 miles and never had any of these issues, but it's never been off-road either. You're listening to a 4x4, 4x4 Radio Network Podcast. Are you ready? It's the Jeep Talk Show with Wendy. There will be body damage. Jeep Mama. Are you sure? Josh. Yeah, I don't think so. And Tony. I think that's a huge deal. So sit back, strap in, and brace yourself. It doesn't matter if you have a Toyota Corolla, want a Toyota Corolla. Wait a minute. Our never, Wait, that's a different show. Wait a minute, what happened? Our never driven anything but a Toyota Corolla. This show's for you. Josh, uh, Tammy, Tammy, Wendy, and myself are here to inform you and enta- entertain you while we talk about Jeep. Not Toyota that. Corollas. <laughs> <laughs> now, hey, I'm Josh. On this episode of the Jeep Talk Show, <laughs> we've got an all-new must-have pick of the week for your Jeep. We'll get into some news, celebrate a Jeeper's ingenuity, we'll talk about Bruce Springsteen for a, just a brief moment, and just why Jeep manufacturing came to a standstill recently. I've also got some tech talk for you later, too, so stick around. And howdy, it's Wendy, and I'm sharing a funny little story about our Jeep. Hi, I'm Jeep Mama, and on Jeep Life, on again, off again, Easter Jeep Safari, and some tips I learned from last year. I'm Tony, and I'd like to know... How black should a toe get before you cut it off? Oh. Indeed. Asking for a friend. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Local Jeep News, National Jeep News, and news from around the world. It's This Week in Jeep. It's been said a time or two that where there's a will, there's a way. While bored at home on a rare snowy day, JJ decided that he was going to go plow the snow in front of his house. But not in the way that it's typically done. So, how did J.J. the Jeeper do it, you ask? With a home-built plow consisting of a foldable table, metal poles, and some 2 by 4s Yep, J.J.'s wife even posted a video of him in action with the Jeep and the homemade plow out on TikTok. It, of course, went viral in no time. I, I seriously can't believe how well this ingenious invention actually worked. I mean, there's yeah. no chance in hell it will ever see another Thanksgiving dinner, but hey, at least the concept was proven out. And who knows? I mean, you know, maybe this will spur on some other inventors out there to make a stowable, more heavy duty version of this folding t- uh, tables, folding table snowplow design. Anyways, for his ingenuity, I hereby award JJ of Washington, D.C., the Jeep Talk Show Ingenuity Award of the Year. <laughs> you know um i can't talk today either i noticed that while we were chatting before the show i was having problems putting two syllables together so don't feel bad I josh i love this picture josh i'm glad you posted it because i loved it when i saw it what a, it's such a great idea it's clever yeah no that's that's pretty pretty clever indeed and you know the video actually shows it in action the pictures really don't do it much justice at all uh and so yeah it, it this thing is is really something else i how how long it really would last? I well oh, probably yeah. not you know uh, for very much longer. I mean probably enough to do the you know the driveway, uh, the parking lot, uh, you know in front of his apartment complex, maybe something about like that, and that's about it. I don't think he's going to be clearing the streets, uh, you know, much for you know with something like this. But nonetheless, well, uh, very and, and also yeah, it has to be light snow, you know that light fluffy snow because yeah, the heavy exactly, stuff I don't think yeah. it's going to go through powder. it. No, yeah. not too much ice buildup would uh, would probably uh, yeah. you know. <laughs> suffer that one pretty well but yeah no definitely uh, gets a uh, gets a little bit of nod here from folks here at jeep talk show wonderful Absolutely. idea of interesting pictures and i'm sure the video is very interesting too however there's going to be a, be, be a bit of contention come next thanksgiving when the wife wants to know where's that table that folding table right. we always put up to hold the food <laughs> you got a hundred thousand views and <laughs> why, why the yeah. hell is this edge of the table looking like this uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah i'll put it i'll put it towards i'll it. put it towards the wall for sure but it's, come on why it's really rough on this side i, I hurt myself what the heck <laughs> <laughs> sharp edge it's weird sharp edges well, the DUI charges have been dropped against Bruce Springsteen. Oh, you and need to G- play that, that, that cheering is- thing again. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Federal prosecutors said they could not prove drunk and reckless driving charges against uh, him connected to his arrest on, on November 14th at a Gateway National Recreation Area in New Jersey. Springsteen did, however, admit during a court hearing that he had, quote, two small shots of tequila and pleaded guilty to consuming alcohol in an enclosed area in New Jersey, which comes with a $450 fine. To which he replied to the judge, 
I think I can take care of all of that right now, Your Honor. Oh, <laughs> yeah, chump <gosh>. change. <laughs> <laughs> that a, statement all? From, a statement from Jeep later that day said, as and I quote, as we stated previously, we paused the commercial <laughs> until the facts were established. Now that the matter has been resolved, we are unpausing the commercial. Its message of community and unity is as relevant as ever, as is the message that drinking and driving can never be condoned. Wow. Uh, <laughs> hey, Jeep, have you ever heard of a little concept called innocent until proven guilty? Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, I stand by my earlier statements that Jeep had a premature knee-jerk reaction to a story and made a drastic, if not desperate, decisions based on a story before all the facts were out. The excuse, I'm sure, was uttered in some conference room somewhere that, oh, we need to get in front of this immediately. Get somebody on this right now. <laughs> so cancel <laughs> culture wins guy. and we all lose. <laughs> Whatever. At the end of the day, it's still just a commercial. Oh, my gosh. Did anybody else notice uh, uh, Bruce Springsteen's initials? I just uh, I just thought about that whenever I was watching the show notes earlier today. <laughs> it's all BS. Well, it's all the BS. Whole, well, the whole <laughs> thing's BS. I mean, they're just give me a break. <laughs> so, so I'm just so I'm so happy year. that okay. the boss is uh, is no longer you know got a DUI hanging over him. You know that can't, couldn't have been the first time that uh, he could have got one. I actually uh, heard from another uh, on the radio, local radio station out here. Real that, radio. Uh, apparently, the the judge had uh, commended him for his driving record because, I mean, you know, Bruce Springsteen's been around the block a few times and uh, had a license for a long time. So uh, the judge was like, "Well, you've only got like two speeding tickets. It's pretty good." Uh, th th those things stay on there. I thought that if <laughs> I thought things drop off after like seven <laughs> drop years, off. I don't, maybe the judge can see things that we can't. I don't know. <laughs> well, you know no. what? And then that's it. The part you're not seeing is the judge asked for his autograph afterwards. So, you know, seriously. Yeah. Just a joke. Well, a production freeze has been extended at a Stellantis factory that builds Jeep and Fiat models. Stellantis said in a statement it had decided to completely suspend activity at the plant on Monday and Tuesday and on February 22nd through the 23rd. The production halt followed a last-minute notification from a supplier last week that it could not provide certain electronic devices due to the lack of semiconductors. Wow. Jeep released a statement regarding the saying, This confirms the current phase of pandemic uncertainty at a global level with the consequent need to adjust production programs on a daily basis. This particular plant was halted over the whole of last week while production at another facility was frozen two days of the week before. Stellantis has asked for flexible uh, furrows uh, schemes until the end of March for the affected plant, which would allow the company to cut production in the coming weeks based on the demand outlook and part supply status. Now, what this will mean for the average consumer is, well, more or less nothing, really, unless this goes on for much longer than what the current supply of Jeeps can account for. In what my research is showing, if what my research is showing is correct, that means that Stellantis has less than a 100-day supply of Jeeps for the entire worldwide market. That is not a lot, considering Jeep has typically operated at a 50-plus day margin for the U.S. market alone. Now, it doesn't sound like this supply chain issue is going to extend much beyond the automaker's capabilities to overcome it, but it still may drive sticker prices up slightly in the weeks mm -hmm. to come. But that's you know, just hearsay. So if you were about to go out and buy a brand new Jeep, I would, however, suggest holding off for about maybe a month or two for things to stabilize a little bit on the global market further or look at maybe a certified pre-owned model that may provide a more attractive uh, financing options. I just can't imagine a world where you couldn't go out and buy yourself a Jeep, a new Jeep, or a new anything for that matter. Um, mm -hmm. You know, kind of somewhat related to this story, um, I think it was Italy that, um, and I don't know that this is true or not, I, I saw it mm -hmm. on Facebook, uh, I think it was Italy that the, they, they kind of all got together and said, we're opening the restaurants, so 50,000, which I can't believe that there's 50,000 restaurants in Italy. But 50,000 restaurants decided to open and tell the government, screw you and your COVID restrictions. And the government went, eh, okay, never mind. Uh, A spaghetti civil war. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, no COVID restrictions. You, you guys, you know, go ahead. Wow, <laughs> so that, it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's like, it's like the people decided what the, the, the government was going to do instead of the government deciding what the people were going to do. Which is the way it should be. Yeah, which is yeah. actually kind of the way it is. <laughs> kind of how it works, actually. Yes. Yeah. People yeah. are sheeple, so there we are. Well, I mean, everybody, nobody, uh, nobody wants to the, the have bad things happening to them, but uh, I, I think with what we know now, maybe it's time to 
uh, go out and get the Jeeps going again. What do you think? Here, here. Absolutely. Well, speaking of that, Tony, I've got a little something that I want to talk about uh, that popped up in my research over this last uh, week or two. And, and this was actually really cool because the, the article that I, was, uh, that I was reading was done exceptionally well. Uh, went into some really fine detail, even gave some real-world examples, lots of pictures, a great write-up to, uh, to go along with it. And it's all, about the, Jeep gladiators, oh, okay. it's all about the Jeep Gladiator's ability to tow a heavy or even oh. an oversized oh, load. Oh, this, now, will, this will be good. For, yeah. For those who don't know, the Jeep Gladiator has blown pretty much every other vehicle in its class out of the water with its towing capabilities. Um, now, just what that means for you and me or somebody who's interested in buying a Jeep Gladiator, well, this article goes into those details details and actually really shines a light on what the Gladiator can do um, as far as towing and stuff. I'll go into a little bit of the details and, and some uh, sneak peeks into this for our bonus segment after the show. So if you want to find oh, out cool. about what I have to say about all of this, you're going to have to get the app. You're going to have to have that on your Apple or Android device so that you can get that bonus content. That's the only way to get it. You got to have the app. So if you want to hear this with this one of a kind content, you got to have that app. Yep, it's available on Apple and Android devices. You can uh, just go to the respective stores. Hell, you can even go to the Amazon uh, store and uh, get it from there uh, if you have one of the uh, cheap Amazon tablets. So you can listen to the show on your tablet, your phone. Man, it's just, it's everywhere. There's no excuse. You, you just There's no excuse for you not to listen to it. <laughs> well, in the meantime, if you've got a news tip or response to any one of our stories here on This Week in Jeep, be sure to let us know what you got to say uh, by phone or by email. Just head over to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact to find out how to reach out. You're listening to a 4x4 Radio Network podcast. Hey, do you know somebody who's into off-roading, but maybe not Jeeps? Well, tell them about the 4x4 Radio Network. No matter what they're into, we've got something for every shade of 4x4 enthusiast. Now, even Nikki G, he pops in there every so often. That's right. Now, on the Trail <laughs> Podcast is there. Trail Chasers is there. The Center Steer Podcast, the 4x4 Podcast. Hey, we're there too. Lots of great off-road shows. It's all for free. It's all in one spot. It's at 4x4radionetwork.com. That's the 4x4 Radio Network. We'll see you there. Hey, coming up in Tech Talk, is your ABS or EPS light on? EPS? I've never seen it. EPS, that's interesting. It might be due to your steering wheel being out of alignment. We'll teach you how to fix it later in the show. EPS, what is that? I'm thinking about the Environmental Protection Agency. I'm thinking of EPA when I see EPS. I was like, this can't be good. <laughs> ESP. Ooh. Oh, yeah. You should, uh, it will know automatically. What? Where's the noob? Noob! 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 Hey, noobie! Noobie! Noob Nugget. It's time for Noobie Nuggets. Well, I want to tell you a story about a little Jeep. Okay, well, it's not that kind of story. Actually, I want to share that I've noticed the Jeep, our Jeep, wanders from side to side when driving it daily or on paved roads. It was happening when we first got the Jeep, but Bill always sort of fixed it with one of those you know, while you're in there moments, or, you know, if I replace this with that, or maybe this will do it, comments. Well, it never really got resolved. Last year, after installing the PSC Hydro Assist Steering, it got to the point where I just didn't trust driving it on pavement. It felt like I was not in control of the vehicle. Now, I'm used to responsive steering on the Chevy, and this seemed to be getting worse as time went on. It was great on the trails, but driving on pavement at 40 miles an hour was becoming a real challenge. Now, when we got the Jeep, it was pre-dented and had about 65,000 miles on it. Most everything was good, but Bill never could identify what brand the parts were, which is why he slowly upgraded suspension parts over time. Now, you may recall me discussing in a previous fireside chat that around 38 to 41 miles an hour, there was a strange vibration wobble that we could never, ever figure out. And no, it wasn't death wobble. Now, we swapped out so many things to see if we could nail it down until we just decided this was part of the Jeep. And let it be, and when it finally broke, then we'd know what it was. And now the wandering would be added to that list. Well, Bill is not one to give up, and he made it his goal to figure out why our Jeep wanders and other Jeeps that he's driven do not. Now, in the beginning, before we were fully immersed in all things Jeep, we, we did take it to a few shops, but no one could really help us. So Bill made it his mission to solve the mystery. Now, he changed springs, shocks, control arms, caster, pinion, angle, hubs, drive shafts, etc., and etc., to try and fix the problem. Nothing seemed to work. Now, when we added the PSC steering, which, by the way, is awesome when crawling on the rocks, 
The wandering was even worse. The PSC steering was so easy and smooth to drive and effortless, but there isn't much feedback in the steering wheel. The wandering got so bad, I stopped driving it as a daily driver last year. It was literally like driving bumper cars. Remember those? <laughs> I was sure it was going to bounce off of someone else or something else. Anyway, just by luck, when Bill was helping Don Alexander with his Sahara build-out, Bill got to meet and work with John Curry from Rock Jock. When Don and Bill were installing the new JL suspension on Don's Jeep, Bill got a first-hand look, training as he calls it, into how suspensions work and the proper way to install them and align the axles. Now, Bill took that info back to our Jeep and discovered that the axles were slightly out of alignment from each other and offset to one side of the Jeep. Now, once Bill adjusted the front end, he could see that the back axle was not in the same alignment. Turns out the rear were off by about an inch and a half, probably just enough wow. to cause the wandering. Mm -hmm. He adjusted the front lower and upper control arms properly. Then he swapped out the rear springs and installed an adjustable track bar to get the rear axles centered in the frame. And what do you know? It drives like a brand new Jeep. So after proper and precise alignment of the axles, you can't believe how awesome this Jeep drives now. No more wandering. Bill thinks it may have been the two axles fighting each other. It even drives great with aired down tires, which we drive sometimes living so close to Gold Mountain, we air up at home. No sense in using the power tank on the trail if we don't have to. I'm telling you that it's like night and day. So I'm back to love it, loving driving the Jeep daily and want to remind the newbies that sometimes you have to be persistent and never give up on finding a solution to a funky problem. And by the way, that funny vibration is also gone. Probably the axles being off or who the heck really knows. Now, I no longer have that strange sensation or of wandering or vibrating. All right, Tony, get your mind out of the gutter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, has there been something that has been annoying on the Jeep, but you just had a hard time pinning it down, the source of the problem? But come on, you had to ask Bill, can you fix the wandering but bring leave the vibration in there? Come yeah. on, come on. You, you, so be honest. <laughs> you know what? There are some bizarre things that happen when you start doing things in your Jeep and you just it can't really explain It really is. Them. It really yeah. is. You know, this is, yeah, there, no modification goes unpunished, uh, as nope. I always say. <laughs> there <Nope>. you go. <laughs> nope. Nope. You know, I was going to, I was going to mention that, you know, speed dependent vibration could be uh, also related to anything from uh, your tires and wheels being out of balance. Uh, especially mm -hmm. if you air down a lot. Um, likely, I mean, they say if you air down even once, uh, you air back up, your tires will be out of balance. Um, huh. and especially if you, if you ever, um, and I don't know if that's true or not. I, that, I that sounds don't, hokey to me. <laughs> I don't, I don't believe that. I mean, it could be to, you know, I mean a very, very small degree, yeah. uh, but it's probably, you know, it takes, you know, dozens of times for you to air down before your, your, your wheels really get out of, uh, out of balance. Well, your tires I, guess, get out of balance. I guess if the tire wear while you have it aired down, that could, that could change the balance. Because your, maybe, your yeah. tires are going to wear differently, I would think. Yeah. And if you air down too far and you end up spinning the rim inside of the tire, that oh, will then yeah. put things out of balance as well. That's true. Uh, if you play in the rocks, uh, in deep mud, uh, really deep, loose rocks, um, your wheel weights could get knocked off. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and and so you, you could lose that. So even in deep snow. Um, yep. you know, snow gets you, you can get ice built up or something like that. There could be something in the snow and suddenly you hit the road and whether it's packed snow in the wheel or something else, you're oh, I bet. You know, well, yeah. driving down what the road. What the hell is going on like, here? Yeah, feelings are about <laughs> ready to fall out. Yeah. So, um, but that's not the end of it either. Um, uh, you know, that is probably one of the most common issues for speed dependent vibration. Uh, but another one is actually your drive lines, either the front or the rear drive line could be out of balance as well. This is a cylindrical spilling, spinning object. It also mm -hmm. needs to be balanced. If, if it's unbalanced, uh, you, you came down on a rock hard, maybe you sheared off the weight that's on there. Those are usually welded on, uh, hard to do that, uh, but possible. Um, uh, drive lines get worn over time, things loosen up, they can get out of balance. So uh, if it's been 100,000 miles, you're still on the same drive lines, maybe it's time to take them out, take them into a shop and have them, uh, have them gone through and have them rebalanced. Uh, you know, so you, once you get into, into things like driveline imbalances, uh, stuff like that, you get these harmonics going on, uh, all kinds of weird sort of vibrations can then persist from, from, from that. It could be the front, could be the rear. It could be both. Uh, I would always suggest if you're going to do one, you do both of them at the same time. 
So uh, I just wanted to throw that two cents in there. I'm glad to hear that the alignment took care of it. Uh, that is another common uh, common issue with uh, with vibration, although that's usually not more speed dependent. It's it's usually more kind of persistent throughout the uh, speed uh, speed range. But uh, but nonetheless, yeah, alignment definitely can cause vibration and stuff as well. But I wanted to throw these other two possibilities out there as well. Well, Wendy yeah, brings up a, an interesting point that you know if you're going to lift your Jeep, if you're having if you need a uh, a different geometry, a, a longer uh, track bar for your front. Mm -hmm. Well, you've mm -hmm. lifted it in the rear as well, so you're going to need to ha be able to adjust that uh, mm -hmm. to get that thing centered. You know, and I, <laughs> I'm sure you guys have run across this too. I saw a Chevy truck that was uh, dog walking down the freeway, bad. Oh. I mean, <laughs> and he was holding the line pretty good. So I don't, I don't know if it's uh, if I mean it worked in your situation, but I guess in Chevy trucks it doesn't matter. You can have it way off. You know, the funny thing about the vibration that we talked about, I think it was last year's one of those episodes of the Fireside Chat, is we did everything. We checked every single thing. We switched other people's tires. We had other axles. We had everything oh, going. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, we, we were down to, it's just the way it's going to be. There's nothing we could do. And at exactly 38 miles an hour, it would start. And if you went to 42, it stopped. And it did not do it in any other speed, 38 to 41. So that's just something we lived with. But this wandering stuff was enough to drive me bonkers. It, that's because, scary. Yeah. Well, it's and it wasn't out of control, but you just felt like there was no response. So you're thinking it's steering wheel or, you know, maybe it's a balancer, the tire. You're just going through your mind, all that well, kind of stuff. Well, you have but to, to pay out, so close attention while you're driving. You can't it's insane. not yeah. pay attention. You can't, yeah. you know, you know, change the radio station on your you know the radio because you may now be in the, the, the next lane it's it's imagine yeah. having that and then not having any sway bars at all oh no. forget it <laughs> forget no, it that's, well, like, you, that's you, like driving my jeep <laughs> you yeah. scare somebody when you almost run into them and then yeah. you go wow look at that thing float around <laughs> so he's trying oh. to control it that's interesting and, that's and just not safe <laughs> And then it was funny. I mean, after he put on the PSC steering, which he's talking about, hey, you know, I'm going to do this. It's going to be great for crawling. And by the way, it is the most awesome process to crawl because, you know, you're not fighting the steering wheel anymore. All of a sudden you add that, which the PSC steering, when you drive normally has this, it's just, it's different. I don't even know how to explain it. There's a lot of, maybe not play, but it just has a smoothness to it that's different from being reactive when you're driving a regular vehicle. So you add that to the wandering. And I, I looked at Bill and I said, I am never driving this it's, again. It wanders, store. but it's so I'm smooth. <laughs> and you don't so even the, realize that it's moving. You know, it's it was just insane. Oh, wow. So the PSC yeah. steering, you're talking about the uh, hydraulic assist yeah, steering, right? Yeah. So uh, I don't know if you have enough for a segment, but I'd like to hear more about that. I've, I've been oh, interested in yeah, I've been interested in in the uh, the hydraulic assist uh, assist steering, and, and I think it's illegal to do all hydraulic, but you can certainly do the hydraulic assist. At least if you're driving it on the road, you, you yep. can't just do 100% hydraulic. But uh, I'll do that. But it was so funny when he figured out that the rear was off. I wouldn't have thought this, that was the issue. I mean, I would have thought uh, ball joints uh, or wheel bearing assemblies, uh, uh, lots of different things. Before I would have thought uh, the axle alignment, the the two Very axles alignment strange yeah i can't believe it was off that much that's just i know incredible. and well and you probably it. since yeah since we got it you know because it was oh yeah doing a little bit of that but you don't notice it and get, bill kept saying you know what it's just a jeep it's the way it drives yeah and i'm like this is getting worse i don't think so my uh, my dad always said when you buy a used car you buy uh, somebody else's problems uh, yeah who knows what happened there but you know and he's been underneath it we've changed and upgraded and you know done all kinds of things to it so it's just a reminder to anybody new that you just don't give up. You know what? You are going to find the solution. It just may take you a while to figure it out. So, All right. Well, do you have a topic or suggestion for newbie nuggets? I'd love to hear from you. For more info, check out my YouTube channel in Jeep 4-1-1 with more tips, tricks, and techniques. You know, speaking of somebody with problems. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> now, we, we enjoy hearing all kinds of reviews here. And they don't have to be glowing we love you, we love you type Jeep Talk Show, uh, oh. love you type thing. Well, this is four out of five. I mean, it's not all bad. Okay. It's, I know, but I mean, you're, they, you're going they, after they them do, to start. <laughs> they do mind their P's and Q's, but but yeah, I mean, there's no accounting for taste. Well, T's it and starts T's. off saying, thank you. And uh, we, ha we do have this review. It's from Lauren Red CD. Uh, and she had given the, uh, the, the show a four star out of five. And says, thank you. After owning several Jeep CJs, allegedly and LJ, I have been looking for a late model Wrangler. 
After listening to this podcast for a year and other Jeep podcasts, I'm going to forget about a Jeep. They what? have so many issues. <laughs> I mean, what a what total piles of junk. My 99 Corolla has 230,000 miles and never had any of these issues. I bet it's never been off-road either. Even my right. old AMC, <laughs> almost a car, CJ7. Now, I got to stop right here. She's yeah, calling what? a CJ7 almost a car? What? <laughs> no. This this person is so delusion. I'm sorry. With 190,000 miles, I didn't have any of these freaky issues. And these stories about lousy dealerships. Thanks for addressing all of these problems. I'm getting a forerunner. Wait a minute. Well, good, lousy good dealerships is new or Jeep specific? <laughs> it was <laughs> one episode about a bad dealership. Come on now. <laughs> Come on. There's... <laughs> Jeep dealerships, or, or I'm sorry, dealerships in general, is just bad, bad news. I mean, come on, everybody has a problem uh, with uh, with dealerships. It doesn't matter what brand, what make or model vehicle you have. Well, you know what? She needs now, to find a Forerunner uh, podcast, and she'll hear the same exact problems and issues. So yep, I was just about to say. I was just like, you know, <laughs> th- there's there's no vehicle that isn't without its own issues, and uh, and just besides that, once you do run into some issues with a Forerunner, uh, and you want to start replacing parts, break out that checkbook. It's gonna be be spending. Luck. Yeah, ah. that's true. Uh, but but I also got to say, you know, the, the 99 Corolla also, uh, despite having 230,000 miles on it, yippee skippy, um, <laughs> it also has its fair share of recalls, by the way. Do your research. Uh, you've yes. got five active recalls <laughs> on that vehicle right now. So, uh, And in the entire Corolla family, uh, from its inception to current, has well over 100 recalls altogether. So, uh, And some of them are very uh, serious, including uh, like faulty lug, nu- uh, uh, lug studs uh, to where your wheel could just... You know, fall off fall on the freeway. <laughs> so, go ahead and keep but, driving that 230,000 yeah. mile Corolla. What's the worst but, that could happen? <laughs> yes. And I just want to say thank you for the four star review. We really appreciate you calling in. <laughs> oh, we do appreciate that four star review, though. What, thank you. what did you just say? Lickety splitty? What, what was the thing you just said, Josh? Yippee skippy. Yippee skippy. <laughs> I, want, I think we're going to replace Rat Bastard with Yippee skippy. No. I like that. <laughs> is that a is that a regional thing? I've never heard that. It must be. I don't know. <laughs> you're, you're surprised that you're hearing it, and I'm surprised that you're surprised that you're hearing it. Yeah, so it's regional. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's funny. <laughs> well, thank you for your review. We definitely appreciate it, and it's it's a lot of fun getting reviews like this. So uh, I, I hope you enjoy your Toyota Corolla and uh, uh, your entry into the whole Toyota four wheeling world. Why did you become a paid subscriber to the Jeep Talk Show? I love the show. I've listened to you guys free for, I don't know, years now, and I figure I'd like, time to give back. You can be a paid subscriber and help support the show you love, the Jeep Talk Show. It'll just uh, help help the show out, and, and then in the end, it'll be Jeep Talk Show in my ear holes, you know? Just go to JeepTalkShow.com and look for the big yellow subscribe button. It'd be nice to give back to uh, so that you guys can continue on, because if they love the show, then why shouldn't you, why shouldn't you give back just a little bit indeed so uh if you are not already familiar uh, with this uh, this term i just uh, referenced it in the prior segment rat bastard rat bastards are people that listen to the show for free now of course you can do that if you don't mind being a rat bastard of course uh but <laughs> we've had several uh new paid subscribers uh, to the show here recently and uh, i really appreciate it i'm sure uh, wendy and josh uh, appreciate it as well uh, I think it's uh, Andrew P. is uh, become a, uh, yes, a, uh, not friends with benefits, a uh, um, sugar daddy, sugar mama. I'm, I'm going to think that Andrew is probably a sugar daddy with a $100 paid wow. subscription. Heck yeah. yeah. The stimulus checks are paying off, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> And I heard from a re- recently from a uh, a Jeep parts guy that they're paying off for him as well. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> while you're in there, yeah, while you're in there. Oh look, I got a check from the government. Let's see. Yeah, it's it's a sign from God to fix the Jeep. Well, it's also a sign from God to uh, become a paid subscriber to the Jeep Talk Show. We really appreciate it. And uh, again, if you uh, you've heard it before about the friends uh, with benefits package, if you get that, or certainly the uh, sugar daddy sugar mama. You're going to get a nice Jeep talk show uh, honor badge to stick on your Jeep. You can stick it anywhere you like, but uh, we'd like to see it on your Jeep. Preferably on the Jeep. (laughs) (laughs) Well, 
Well, that's where we'd like to see it. If you put it someplace <laughs> else, we don't want to see it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Don't send us those pictures. <laughs> From the mind of Nikki G. Hey, this is Nikki G. And Tony, last week you mentioned I call into a few other podcasts. And uh, you are correct. Jeep Talk Show is not my only gig. Uh, I also <gasps> call into <laughs> Route 16 to Grind with Brian. He's been on your show a couple of times. He does oh, yeah. a hunting, fishing, and wheeling podcast. Good folks. And I occasionally comment on uh, Snail Trail 4x4 <laughs> podcast. <laughs> And the Tony and Josh show. You know, and it's it's funny you mentioned last week about the Bruce Springsteen Super Bowl ad. Uh, oh, boy. Bruce Springsteen called into my podcast and left a message. Now here's a clip of it. Hey, this is the boss, and I want to remind everybody to listen to my new podcast I do with Barack Obama called the 10-Minute We Hate Trump Podcast with your host, Bruce and the Goose. What I really want to say is I want to clear the air about my recent Super Bowl Jeep ad where I drive a classic CJ. Yeah, the, the reason why I did that ad is because in this day and age, uh, I'm broke. I need the money. I don't know if you guys are aware about my l- currently having some legal issues. Besides, that wasn't even me driving. It was a stunt double. I'm from Jersey. I can't drive a stick. Besides, the boss rides in the back of limos and cop cars. Heck, I don't even have a driver's license. But that's not why I'm calling. I'm calling to tell you guys that I'm addicted to collecting Beatles albums. Yeah, I need help. <laughs> All right, boys and girls, I'll chat at you yeah. later. And you have a good one. Bye. <laughs> okay, I'll get by with a little help from our considered. Eh, yeah, like, uh, I don't drive, see? And also, <laughs> hey, this is the boss I can't drive. Ah, uh, so Nikki G is obviously uh, taken up, uh, gone from drinking to heroin. Uh, but but we're we're loving it. I was going to go the meth angle, but all right. Meth, yep, sometimes what? the meth does add up. So uh, it's a it's a great a great addition to the uh, show. Thank you very much, oh, Nikki G. No meth. <laughs> <laughs> you got tech questions? Ah, oh, what do I ever? We have answers. Oh, that's good. I can, I, it's tech talk with Jeep Talk. Minute. Hey, now, Josh, I noticed in the picture here, the show notes, the the steering wheel is at a at an angle. Is this is this would this also be a fix for NASCAR drivers? <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> turn left, Dale. Turn left. <laughs> they are permanently in this position. <laughs> Well, if you're a jeeper like me, I, I, I my show note, uh, sh- my co-hosts are, are referring to a picture that's in the show notes, Great and it's podcasting. got a, a jeep steering wheel uh, that's it's at an angle, which is the uh, the whole point of this uh, of this tech talk. And if if you're a jeeper like me, then you're going to find yourself spending some time in or on the rocks, and despite your best efforts, there is still a mist line or a mist throttle that has you wondering if there was any carnage when you get back to the staging area. Now, it's bound to happen to any rock crawler sooner or later. You get off the trail and onto flat ground, and notice that your ABS light, analog brake system, or BAS, brake assist system, and ESP, electronic steering program lights are on. As you continue driving on pavement, you notice your steering wheel isn't quite centered. Even in a straight line, the Jeep logo is at an angle rather than straight across. Your Jeep steering wheel only needs to be off by 5 degrees to trigger the ABS and ESP lights because your Jeep thinks the vehicle isn't moving in the direction that you're steering it. If knocked far enough out of whack, you may not even be able to drive on pavement because the ABS is completely locked up. Your Jeep's computer thinks that the Jeep is actually in a slide and it's using the brake system to try and bring it back under control. If that happens, you're going to also notice that your brakes aren't working properly because the ABS system is already applying the brakes. And not to mention, your gas mileage is going to go way down. Technology is a great thing, until it's not. (laughs) Hence my endless rants on driver-assistant technology. Ah, It's the bane of Jeepers worldwide, but I don't want to get me started. Now, if you play on the rocks and your steering wheel gets bumped out of whack, well, there's no way you can drive that Jeep home safely if you got a bunch of lights on in the dash. Things could possibly get worse. The first time it happens, you might panic, thinking your Jeep isn't drivable, especially if you don't have much in the uh, way of mechanical skills, maybe you have no tools, and are a long way from home. Well, fear not. There is a very simple trail fix to get you back on the road that even an absolute beginner can handle, but you will need some tools. So here is where all of that preparedness we're always preaching about pays for itself many times over, even with a simple socket set or a crescent wrench. Now, okay, the first step is going to be to loosen the drag link adjustment sleeve bolts. 
Now, if you don't know what that is, we have a handy dandy picture that points those out with the common Jeep steering uh, geometry and a picture that has everything color coded and pointed out with arrows. It's very, very nice. Now, after verifying that you haven't actually bent or broken anything, you're going to grab a 15 millimeter socket wrench and park your Jeep on a flat surface with the tires straight ahead. That is if you can. It's important to make sure that they are as straight as possible. If available, have a friend climb into the driver's seat to help keep an eye on the steering wheel while you crawl onto the front of the Jeep. Loosen, but don't remove the two bolts on the drag link adjustment sleeve. And next, you're going to grab that sleeve that is between those two bolts and twist it towards the ground to either move the steering wheel counterclockwise or towards the driver's side door, or you're going to twist it towards the sky to move the steering wheel counterclockwise or clockwise rather, or towards the passenger door. When the steering wheel is straight, tighten up the two bolts and you're good to go. Once everything is tightened back up and the tools are put away, take the Jeep for a little bit of a test ride. Sometimes it may take a couple of adjustments to get it perfectly centered, but you'll be close enough. It's clearly not a hard process and can be done on the side of the trail or the road so long as you're on flat ground and can point the wheel straight. Even in a staging area or a parking lot would be really good. If everything checks out okay and the lights go out on the dash, well, you can safely drive your Jeep home and check for further problems in the comfort of your own garage. Of course, if problems persist or you'd like some extra peace of mind, we'll take it to a mechanic or an off-road shop or even an alignment shop if you prefer. You probably hit your tie rod on a rock, but an off-center steering wheel could be a symptom of a bigger problem too. Just to be safe, here are some things you should check once you're in the garage and have access to you know, a little bit of tools and a safer place to work on the Jeep. Tow-in is important on our Jeeps and a little bit is absolutely necessary. Check that your tow-in on your Jeep is between 1 16th and 1 8th of an inch. If you have an adjustable track bar, verify that your front axle is still centered. Wendy and Bill just went through this here recently absolutely. using a spread edge. <laughs> See if you have a bent tie rod. If you've got a good uh, good you know, steel ruler or something like that, it'll work really good. You'll want to check for any loose track bar bolts, wall it out, bolt holes in any of the mounts, both frame side and axle side as well. Take a look to see if your control arm bushings are worn. You're going to be looking for signs of cracking or missing material. Worn ball joints can cause any number of issues, so get each tire up in the air and check for excessive play. This is done by grabbing the tire at the 12 and 6 o'clock positions and reefing it from the top to the bottom. You don't have the strength to do this simply jack the wheel up a few inches off the ground and using a very large pry bar placed underneath the tire pry upwards to put vertical pressure on the wheel assembly if there is play you have a worn ball joint the steering wheel is reset this, this steering wheel recentering adjustment is also part of the procedure for a front end alignment which yes you can do yourself to a certain extent and it is something that all jeep owners who take their jeep off-road should learn how to do you know, um, I think by the time you reach 40, uh, I think everybody uh, has a worn ball joint or two. Well, now, doctors. <laughs> are we talking to be personal or are you talking about the Jeep? Always, always personal. <laughs> <laughs> so now, Tony, you've done some garage alignments in your day, I, I was, would assume. I mean, you have a three at oh, yeah. one point or Jeep family, I think. You know, I mean, so I'm sure that you've, you know, whipped out the tape measure and a socket set and, and gone to town on the Jeep front end before to make sure everything's all straightened up. Would you consider this a, a hard procedure? It's more tedious. Uh, it's not hard. It's uh, tedious because you have to go uh, back and forth, back and forth. The thing that always gets me is exactly where do you measure that toe? Is it at the edge of the tire, at the edge of the uh, brake caliper? Is it the edge of the, <laughs> the disc brake? I mean, because that, that, you know, how if it's an angle, it, it varies as it goes out. I mean, do you measure it 10 feet in front of the Jeep? Obviously not, but uh, I, I actually saw a little device that uh, basically is just a uh, cut sheet metal where you take the wheels off, you put it on the lug nuts, and then mm -hmm. it, it, you measure there. And I and I was I think I actually asked, how do you determine how long that thing should be? Because that's where you measure the front and rear, so that you can get the the you know the, the toe or in or toe out. Uh, I, I I just find it all very very confusing. Probably because I haven't read anything. That that would probably help me out a lot. <laughs> Well, you look at it this way. If you take your you take your Jeep to a shop, um, they're going to be putting these sort of laser reflector things on your wheels. Yep. Um, that the, the laser computer system measures where those wheels are and, you know, all that sort of stuff. And, and so those are basically based off of the center line of the axle, more or less. Uh, there's probably a few inches to the front, a few inches or, or so. Um, you know, off center that they that they may be, but I mean, you obviously do, you know a yardstick, you know, three feet from the front of the caliper, you probably not want to be measuring out there. Mm -hmm. So that that's that's how that's done. 
Yeah. The, the, does anybody else have problems with the uh, the guy, the alignment guy, getting pissed off because he can't get those reflectors on your uh, your wheels and tires? <laughs> this doesn't. It won't work. It won't stay on. They fall off. <laughs> Gets, I, I will say this. He looks this. at you. He glares at you. <laughs> if you've just done a bunch of, if maybe you've just done a lift kit on your Jeep or you've done some steering modifications or something like that, and you are about to take your Jeep in for an alignment, unless you absolutely know that the place that you're taking it to specializes in four-wheel drive alignment, you're taking it to the wrong place. Mm-hmm. Um, really, do some homework. Call around. You may have to drive a half hour longer to get to the right shop, but trust me. It will be worth it because they will be able to catch the kind of stuff that Bill and Wendy just went through that you otherwise wouldn't know. And likely a shop that doesn't know Jeeps, that doesn't know lifted vehicles, that doesn't know four wheel drive equipment, they're going to miss it. They're going to be doing a, you know, just basically going through the motions, reading off of the book. Well, what's the number supposed to be for a stock Jeep? Well, it's supposed to be this. Well, that's not what it's supposed to be for a lifted Jeep. So, you mm-hmm. know, these there's there's things out there that people just don't know if they don't know. And if you're taking it to the wrong shop, you're going to get the wrong kind of alignment. So make sure that they specialize in off-road alignments because, you know, your regular everyday alignment is not going to cut it for the Jeep. Josh, what are the three uh, things, the three uh, alignments uh, the, the, that you do but you, and the one you can't do on a Jeep or really any, G, any vehicle with a solid front axle? Uh, well, you can't adjust camber on, on a solid front axle. Uh, you can adjust caster, um, which is basically a you know, pinion angle almost uh, right. more than anything. Yeah. Um, and you, can, you can adjust toe in and you can adjust center. So, you know, whether or not the axle is centered under the vehicle, whether or not the ve- uh, the tires are pointed, you know, straight or slightly towed in, uh, that's your toe, and then uh, and then your 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 caster. And the camber uh, is actually like the, the, the wheels, if you will, being leaned uh, towards one another, and this is from the top, uh, like uh, right. uh, looking from the top down, uh, uh, so to speak, you know, where the, the tires are leaning in towards each other or uh, from the top or the bottom. Were you part of the conversation with uh, Steve 4.3 LXJ where he was talking to us about uh, a shop? Because this, this, this made me think, think about it when you said a, a four-wheel drive shop. There was mm-hmm. a shop that he could take his Jeep to to have the camber adjusted on his Jeep. And it wasn't with ball joints because, you know, you can get those little offset ball joints and oh, spin them yeah. around. They literally would tie the Jeep. Uh, axle down to the floor and they had some hydraulic thing that they could bend the axle oh god <laughs> but it wasn't it wasn't like i mean if you were if it was really bad i mean if you had tacoed your jeep by jumping it you probably oh, just need to okay. replace it but i think if it was just off a little bit and you just were too anal about having it off you know it. Yeah, well, you it could, shows that you're you know three tenths of one degree <laughs> off a little bit. you could tell well, you guys gotta fix it <laughs> yeah you, you could take it to this shop and they strap that bitch down and tie and then just start oh, twisting it so yeah that looks pretty good there there you go <laughs> 75 well, tons it's like it. you're it's like you're in the titanic roll over or in beside uh-huh. the adventure all that steel and metal going, yeah. <laughs> well i i just wanted to make a comment about your article josh and i really appreciate yeah. the visual because <laughs> i have been in the driver's seat multiple times while bill is doing what you talked about to put the screen oh uh, yeah of course straight. you have and so now you now you know you've got a visual representation of I what do. he was doing under there Bill, yes, what are you doing on there? Can you video it yes. for me? Oh, well, <laughs> speaking he's of which, to show me, but you know, now I get a visual. I know what he was. Speaking doing. of which, speaking about Bill being under things, I, I got to <laughs> give him props for last episode. I mean, he was on point with that jab. I, I came in. I, he came to play. He came to play. Uh, so I got it. Hats off to Bill for for last episode with, Bill, the, with the joke Bill right never, off the bat. That was. Yeah. That I have was, it on. I, I was. I had me laughing pretty good. I have it on good authority. Bill never takes his hat off. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and the other thing I want to comment about your article is that we actually used a tape measure to measure toe-in as well. So we were actually adjusting those tires to figure out the distance because it's all we had, you know, was just a big yeah. tape measure. So I'm out there helping him. 
And we just placed it on the inside of the tire on the exact same spot every single time, front and back, right, yeah. so that we could right. make sure it was done. But, you know, back and forth and the frustration. But I love this visual because it just now all makes sense to me what exactly we were doing. So, and thank see, you sometimes that. that's, that's all you need is just a little bit of a visual representation, something that points out something that you just, you don't know what it is. You don't know what you're looking at. So here's mm -hmm. some descriptors. Here's some color coding. Now you understand a little bit of what some of these terms mean and stuff like that. Oh, speaking of terminology, Tony, it's been a little while since we've pimped this, but oh, yeah. you know, Jeep, the Jeep Talk Show on our website has the web's biggest, largest, most extensive glossary of terms related to jeeping and off-roading anywhere on the internet. So if you want to, you, you want to get more familiar with you know off-road terminology. Uh, maybe you want to quiz your younger brother or something like that. You know, <laughs> hey, honey, do you know what this means? You know, that sort of thing, you know, all, all that sort of stuff. Um, we have it there. Uh, it's very interactive. You can search through stuff as well. Uh, and, and so and I guarantee you're not going to find a more extensive glossary of terminology related to Jeeps and off-roading anywhere else on the web. Head over to jeeptalkshow.com. You can check it out there. And uh, if you ever hear something in one of our uh, one of our episodes that you don't understand, you weren't sure what we were talking about, head over to the glossary. You'll probably be able to look up that term and you'll find out what we're talking about. And as always, make sure you set the what if, if you get this wrong, this is what you have to do for me whenever you're dealing with your uh, wife, girlfriend, or boyfriend. Yeah. Well, if you have anything to add for this topic or any other, make sure maybe you have a question for Tech Talk. Make sure you jump over to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact and send us a message. Are you living the Jeep life? From mall crawlers to weekend warriors, from daily drivers to weekend wheelers, it's all about the Jeep life, and it's all good. It's time for Jeep Life with Jeep Mama. Wendy, Josh, and Tony, synthetic over steel, black over red, no lockers <laughs> over lockers. Ha, just wanted to throw my two cents in. I wheeled about a year without lockers. I typically don't use my lockers unless I'm in a really difficult spot. Wheeling without lockers has helped me become a better wheeler. Not using them helped me pick a better line. Actually, when to use the lockers and when not to, and when to use the front and rear, and when to use the rear only, is a whole other learning experience in itself. Using your lockers can get you into a predicament if you don't know what you're doing. So my advice is to wheel without them as long as you can. Learning your Jeep and your abilities is important. Don't just use them to use them. Use them in situations where they will help you through a difficult spot, not trail. On to Jeep life. The Moab Easter Jeep Safari 2021 has been canceled. Wait, no, it's back on. No, it's been canceled. Wait, it's back on. This back and forth could be going on for days as information is spread on social media and media outlets. To stay up to date with the most accurate information, keep checking the official webpage of the Red Rock Four Wheelers Incorporated website, www.rr, the number four, w.com. This is the four wheel drive group in Moab who hosts Easter Jeep Safari every year. They are the official trail guides and help organize the vendor show. As of the last time I checked their page, EJS is on. Well, some of it is. The vendor show has been canceled for a second year in a row due to health reasons. The ride part is still on. I did read, since 1967, EJS has been held in Moab every year, with the sole exception of 2020, when the event was canceled due to COVID-19. SEMA has reported that the Grand County Commission Administrator, Chris Bayard, has plans to amend the ordinance that would have canceled 2021's event just like last year's. Bard requested that EJS attendees, RR4W members, and the four-wheeling community send letters to the county commission in support of the amendment to the ordinance. The amendment was to take place on February 16th. As far as everything, as of this morning's check on the internet, it all went off as planned. No matter what happens with the event, if you had plans to hop in your Jeep and head to Moab for Easter Jeep Safari 2021, don't let the on-again, off-again stop you from loading up your Jeep and heading out to Moab, Utah. Last year's EJS 2020 was canceled, but that didn't stop us from going to Moab. Camping in Grand County, Utah, which is the city Moab is in, was shut down. You were able to camp on BLM land, though, if you were from the area. Now, the county right next to Moab, Rio Grande County, those BLM lands were open. 
However, due to fears of taking up hospital beds, non-Rio Grande and surrounding area citizens were asked to leave. We were asked to leave BLM lands. We were still able to hit the trails for about three days, though, before we were asked to leave. This year, I don't see the strictness of camping as it was last year, which means Utah trails will be open as they were last year. And from what I'm gathering, so will BLM camping. I know folks who are still going that have hotel reservations as well as some rental, home rental reservations. Don't let the possibility of an off-again cancellation stop you from experiencing this amazing place. If you are unfamiliar with the trails, I suggest you get the Gaia GPS app and or a guide to Moab, Utah, back roads and four-wheel drive trails on Amazon. That book has details of over 80 trails in the area. I'm also betting there will be other Jeepers around, unlike last year. We didn't see any Jeeps on the trails or in Moab during non-EJS 2020. We did see a lot of mountain bikers and a couple of side-by-sides. It was really eerie. I bet this time if you go, you will find other Jeepers to connect with. And if you do go, I suggest you make a point to head to Arches National Park. It's amazing. And there's a back way into that park. It's a 4 by 4 trail. That's an easy trail. And this trail takes you through some cool dinosaur footprints. The road that turns into a 4 by 4 trail is Willow Springs Road of a Highway 191. Now, I know there are some limitations for group gathering size, which is why the vendor show was canceled. When camping, it's pretty easy to maintain distances. And on the trails, you don't want to be in a group of more than 10 Jeeps anyways, as it bogs down your ride. Since there are so many trails, you may want to stay away from the more typical ones if you haven't signed up for the group rides. You can still go to Moab and wheel and not have signed up for the rides. Don't forget, there's the Jeep Badge of Honor as well. There are several trails in that area that are Badge of Honors. One trail is Top of the World. Now, this trail is not for beginners, but when you get to the top of this trail, it's the most amazing scenery I have ever seen in my life. It is so worth it. It's a day-long trail, so make sure you fill your gas tank and bring lots of food and water. If you plan on heading to Utah, air down, hit the trail, stay safe, and tread lightly. Next week on Jeep Life, I will share some tips and experience of camper life in the Colorado winter. Now, Tammy, they can't ask you to leave if they can't find you. And if they, <laughs> and if they find you, uh, no speaking the English O is a handy item to have. <laughs> Good advice. Good advice. <laughs> English O? I don't know if that's, uh, uh, if that's technically knows. correct. <laughs> well, how, how does uh, Tammy's Jeep life? Hey, guys, where did that go? I know. Somebody's editing was, the, uh, was, the show that was, notes. That was my fault. There you go. I, got, I'm like, I, I, I had a I picture queued up, so and it just went okay. boom, gone. All right. <laughs> well, let me start that again. So how does Tammy's Jeep life compare with yours? We're always looking for Jeep stories, so contact us and let us know what your Jeep life is like. Just go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact to find out how. You must have needed this every day. I need it. It's the Jeep Talk Show's must-have stuff, pick of the week for your Jeep. You know, one of the things uh, that I think a lot of people have a problem with getting into their Jeeps and stuff is is where to put the cell phone. Yep. You know, there's only so much uh, available space to rest a phone, to set it, to keep it, to, you know, from flying across the vehicle or anything else. Otherwise, you pretty much got to, like, tuck it under one leg. Uh, shove it in the glove box. I mean, what, what do you do, right? Or you start taking up valuable space elsewhere. Well, I've got a solution for you that's going to end this solu- uh, end of this problem once and for all. Made in the USA, specifically for the 2011 to the 2017 Jeep Wrangler, instead of taking up valuable storage room in the dash tray or taking up space in a cup holder, which that's also very valuable space, yeah. this instead holds any phone in place with rock-solid brackets that install behind the dashboard and actually put the phone in the ideal position right next to the stereo. The phone literally becomes part of the Jeep. I mean, you can still take it with you and all that sort of stuff, but, you know, it comes as a complete package that includes all the parts you need, brackets, mount, swivel, and holder. The included heavy-duty swivel feature allows the user to put the phone in both the horizontal and vertical positions to make best use of the screen, no matter what app you're using. The holder is adjustable from 2 inches up to 3 and 3 quarters inches. That can fit any modern phone, like the iPhone XS Max, iPhone X, Samsung S9 Plus, you know, you get the idea. All kinds of big phones. 
will fit in this sort of thing. And this actually does bolt to the, the stuff behind the dash. It doesn't get any more solid than this. So if you're using something like, you know, double-sided tape or the thing that sticks <laughs> inside of the tray on your dash or one of those stupid vent clip holder thingamajiggers that oh absolutely ruined the, the vents on your dashboard, stop it. Spend some money, get yourself the end-all, be-all of cell phone mounts for your Jeep. I mean, you're in your Jeep just about every day anyways, right? Your cell yep. phone, you've got to use it every day, right? So you might as well it's have it. It's a safety it thing. You know? And it is a safety thing, too. So, yes, this is going to be a little bit more expensive than what you're used to for a cell phone holder. But, again, you're not having to replace it once every three months, every year. Where'd that thing go? I just had it when I was vacuuming the car out. Now, where is it? Not anymore. This is going to be the last one you ever have to buy. And at $65 with free shipping, well, of course, it's going to be the last one that you're ever going to buy. I highly recommend this. I've installed these sort of... Uh, um, versions of these sort of things in other vehicles in the past, and it just doesn't get any better than this. Now, for instance, this is the same kind of uh, mounting technology that police have been using in their vehicles, emergency vehicles um, across all sorts of municipalities for years, for decades, they've been using the same sort of technology. Now it's available for the mainstream and for um, a wide variety of different electronics. So, uh, time to come up to, uh, you know, keep up with the Joneses, as it were. Get yourself one of these, 65 bucks. You will not regret it. Now, you know, there's somebody out there with a vent clip cell phone holder that <laughs> says, so happy to like this my is going to, your Mr. Podcast guy. this is held on, <laughs> this is held on through thick and thin. Uh, I, I swear to you, one day, whenever the cell phone flies across the, the, the Jeep, mm -hmm. you're going to mm -hmm. pick it up and go, well, what happened? And there's going to be a vent that it's still clipped to because it's taken the little <laughs> the little piece the, of the vent with it. The vent with it, yeah. Now, this, there's this, it's just basic physics, people. you got to have it mounted to something that is solid. And uh, I, I went with the 67 Designs uh, equipment that actually bolts into the top of the dash. Uh, and uh, it, it actually wasn't made for the Cherokee, but uh, I'm a, damn it, I'm a man and I made it fit. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I made it fit. Darn it's, it! It's actually uh, designed more for the uh, for the Wranglers with that little uh, I don't know key holder, cell phone holder, little thing that's in the center. Da I mean the, the center console at the top. It uh, mm -hmm. it bolts into there. It's very solid. So it's very similar to this. So if you can get this, where does it? Did it, did you say where it bolts to? Yeah, so this one actually bolts. Um, so there's, there's uh, on this version of the, of the Jeep Wrangler, there are two ten. Well, actually, there's four ten millimeter bolts that hold the stereo in. There's two flanges on uh -huh. on each side, and it, it takes those two ten millimeter bolts. Um, and and so you're literally this is very nice. bolted into the bolted into the dash, people. And not we're not talking about you know screwing new holes. This actually fits in uh, through that very thin gap in between the stereo. Right. And the edge of the dashboard cover itself. So you itself. can remove it and not have this big gaudy yes, hole. You're not going to have big chunky holes. You're yeah. not drilling anything into the dash. Nothing like nice. that. The, the, yeah. So there is some installation involved in this. So you've got to be comfortable with, you know, popping panels off, things like that. Very getting into tight to spaces do. to remove, you know, some tight bolts and stuff. But trust me, again, it's worth it. Especially when this thing is so rock solid and keeps things in place so well. So... Check it out. There are other versions of this. This one is the GTA Car Kits version. This company's been around for quite a while. They know what they're doing. Their stuff is solid. They have great reviews, uh, and their prices are fair. There are other versions out there for other vehicles and of obviously other uh, manufacturers as well. Uh, this is just so happens to be one that I, I'm familiar with the company, and I stand by their product. So, um, But you know, your mileage may vary. Uh, if you have a, a company that you're familiar with that does the same sort of thing that you like, would rather go with, Please, just do yourself a favor, spend the extra money, and get the last cell phone holder you will ever need. And I'm, I'm sure you, you guys realize what the safety aspect of this is, because if, you're, if you can just glance over at your cell phone instead of having to get it from underneath your leg, and you know, I, I had some very graphic images whenever you start, started talking about tucking your cell phone under your leg and <laughs> Putting it into the <laughs> the glove compartment. And, no, but, I'm not going with the kind of tuck that you see in Silence of the Lambs, okay, Tony? <laughs> it's, it's a completely different... <laughs> oh, what a great clip for the show. Uh, <laughs> that was just, I need that audio clip. But you uh, to go there. Yeah, but, but I, mean, I, mean, I mean, of course, if you if you can just glance over there, and even if you just have to swipe it to be, to be able to see, it's still going to be safer mm -hmm. 
than trying to dig around in your back pocket, in your jacket, or wherever the hell it is. So yeah, uh, definitely, uh, definitely get this because it's a, it's a, it's it's for the life of your Jeep. It's going to be the safety of your Jeep. I saw a uh, a Jeep recently on uh, Facebook where they had taken out a telephone pole in the middle of the Jeep. So <laughs> this could wow. keep you from doing that. Think of the telephone poles, people. <laughs> Well, now that you must have one of the GTA Car Kit phone holders for your own Jeep, we're going to make it easy for you. Just go to our website, jeeptalkshow.com, and look for the link in the show notes for episode 478. Everybody goes, oh, they're going to make it easy for us? They're going to give, it, give one they're away? They're just going to give it away to everybody <laughs> the website? No, no, not that easy. Oh, and then it perks up, and then, no, oh, they're not giving one away. <laughs> I tell you what, that is a uh, one sexy 1999 Toyota Corolla you're driving there, uh, Josh. How did you get it up past these rocks? <laughs> no. uh, uh, yeah, he drug it, man. He was drug behind with the Jeep. Man, the the women must be just uh, falling all over you for that. Uh, yep. <laughs> 1999 Toyota Corolla. Any drop and curl. Yes. Just Indeed. sexy. Just sexy. Right nobody there. ever. You know. <laughs> oh well, I'm glad you guys could make it, Tony. You had a you had a great show last week. Uh, episode. Oh, four, you're just saying seven. that because you were you got off. You didn't. <laughs> no, no, you didn't have to do anything. <laughs> well, I do a little something. You did. No, you did. I was uh I, I was I was listening to it and um and, and you guys were talking. I mean, there's several points where I was like, oh, you guys are talking about this, and I actually had something similar happen uh, recently. And and I mean, there's all these other things. You guys got into some tech. And and I I really wish I could have been part of that discussion because I I have a lot that I would have liked to have added to that conversation. I know. So it I may end up turning. Now you guys kind of went into you spent five or ten minutes talking about you know seat belts and and seat belts yep. off road and, and things like that. And and th- we could honestly probably do a whole show just on seat belts and being off road and stuff like that. So I, I will probably be talking about that. We may. Um, do something in a campfire site chat background uh, with, with that. Uh, we may be doing something uh, in a tech talk related to that. I don't know, but uh, that is going to be something that we're going to be addressing here on the show because it's something that everybody has to deal with. So um, uh, you guys were talking about that. I was, I really wanted to, it's like, I got to call in and talk about this. <laughs> so, no. um, also, um, somebody had mentioned something about siphoning gas. And, and oh, last sucks. week, Last week, somebody, you know, with white lips. Yeah. Um, so uh, <laughs> yeah, there's not too many people that get the white lips reference there. Um, but no, siphoning gas, actually um, w- working out on, on a site uh, this week, and somebody grabbed the wrong gas cans and put f- uh, just oh, regular no. gasoline into our Bobcat. And we've got, you know, Ooh. Bobcat S185, you know, little skid steer, um, you know, dozer type thing. And, uh, and of course, dead in the water. Uh, what did you just use that can? No, that can doesn't have diesel in it. What are you doing? And so they call me up and they're like, you know, we can't figure out how to drain the tank on this thing. Do you, do you know what to do? And so I get out there and I'm not, mind you, I I am no diesel mechanic. I am no heavy machinery operator or, or technician by any stretch of the imagination. I just so happen to be technically inclined and have a pretty good mechanical aptitude you can think and can do really <laughs> yeah. decent troubleshooting. And so I get out there and it's like, well, have you guys tried this? Did you do that yet? And, and it says, you know, this, that, and the other thing. And pretty soon work is going again. And in about an hour later, we have everything drained and 10 gallons of fresh diesel in there. The thing primed up and ready to go and, and blowing black smoke. We're, we're off. Awesome. Okay. And, and so crisis averted. Um, but it was one of those things where we actually had to start, you know, thinking, okay, do we have to siphon this diesel gasoline mix out of this gas tank, you know, out of this, you know, little Bobcat excavator thingy? And and so it's like, who's going to do it? Who's going to suck on the hose? You know, passing it around. Are you going to uh, do the, it? The you person that it? put the gas in it is going to suck <laughs> on yeah, the hose. That's who yeah, and that's, then, that's who it was. Too, and then so. he's going to drain out the gas. Yeah. So well, um, I'm saying, uh, I'm thinking you got other heavy equipment around there. Couldn't you have just picked up the Bobcat, turned it upside down, and shook it? <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> no, the, the heavy equipment we have isn't big enough for that oh, sort of thing. But that hey, a great if, YouTube if, video. If we did, if we did, then yes, that would have been something we could have tried to do. That's <laughs> good one, Tony. <laughs> no, but this video. week we're not. We're not. Yeah, no. We're, this week we're not talking about siphoning gas or, or white lips or anything like that. But I just had to chime in on on that. Uh, <laughs> let you guys know that I was listening. So now you're feeling how people feel listening to the show that want oh, no, to get interactive yeah. with us. Yeah. And, and of course you Maybe can. You call in. 
And, 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 and of course, yeah, you're feeling like good. Wendy when she keeps trying to talk and we don't let her. <laughs> That's all right. I'm buttoned in when I need to. Wendy's here and she was, she can't even comment because we just, Josh and I are horrible about just, just uh, stealing uh, audio time. Wendy, I'm so sorry. No, don't you worry about it. You guys are good. <laughs> you guys are good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the, the Zoom people are great. They're, I love talking to them. It was a, uh, it was a lot of fun last week. It was week. fun. Definitely was fun. We're going to have to do that more often. Uh, and uh, I mean, there, there, there are go-to folks whenever uh, things aren't working out right. Like if Josh can't be here or Wendy can't be here, uh, that's our, our go-to folks to, to have a chat with. And they do not disappoint. They're a yeah. great interactive audience. And we'd yeah, like no, to hear from good. you guys from voicemails and uh, emails. And we do. We, hear, we do hear from people. And we really appreciate that. But man, if you're if you're yelling at your phone or your tablet or maybe you're playing it through your uh, your uh, infotainment system in your Jeep, uh, don't yell. I mean, yell if you want to, but call us, in. Yeah, call in. You know, yell at us. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, even we can if, take it. Even if you're in, I mean, this is too much. Even if you're in your Toyota Corolla, you can uh, call in. You can, yep. You know, I'm going to do something we haven't done in a while, and I know it goes against what we've been told we should do, Uh-oh. but the number's 530-675-4102. There you go, folks. 530-675-4102. That's the phone line to the Jeep Talk Show. Man, I think I have forgotten that number. We used to say that all the time. Every episode, at least once oh, or wow. twice. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, I've got it kind of well ingrained, and and so, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those numbers where... Y- Come on, call it. We you know, use you, you, every episode. I mean, not every episode. We use every voicemail that we receive. I don't care what you say. I may bleep some of it, but we're going to use it. <laughs> That's how Nikki G got on the show. <laughs> 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 All right. So back to the campfire side chat. Now, this is a, a part of the show where uh, we kind of went a little bit long, kind of down a rabbit trail there. But uh, we pick a topic and we talk about it. We bring in listeners uh, outside the show. Uh, live as we are recording this to chime in on this topic and, and share their opinion uh, crack wise or make jokes about it, whatever it is. Uh, this week, it's it's kind of one that's straight out of the headlines um, that I, I was going to talk about it in in a um, this week in Jeep, but it's one of these kind of topics where, you know what, this is kind of one of those things to where there could be a number of opinions on this. And so I kind of wanted to go to our fan base and go go to the people who uh, you know, join our Zoom room, interact with the show, and see where they stand on this. And what I'm talking about is a headline recently that came out uh, about the chief of the Cherokee Nation saying it's time for Jeep to stop using the Cherokee name badge. Jeep has been using the Cherokee name badge since 1974. Wow. So why is it taken over 46 years, nearly five decades, almost a half a century to finally come forward with a complaint? Seems mm-hmm. like somebody is making a problem out of something that really isn't one. So my question for, for my co-hosts and for you out there listening and for our, our Zoom people uh, who have joined us tonight, uh, should Jeep back down or should they tell the Cherokee Nation that they should have stepped up sooner? Where do you stand on this issue? This can be somewhat delicate and, and I'm sure there's going to be a number of different opinions. So I kind of want to find out where everybody stands on this as it is one of those headlines that seem to be dominating the web right now. So as usual, we've got a number of listeners that have joined us, and of course, you can join uh, join us each each time when we record the episode. Uh, there's a number of ways to do that. We'll talk a little bit about how you, if you're new to the show, can join in on this conversation. So uh, going around the campfire, we're going to talk with Chris from 7 Chris, where do you stand on this topic? I think it's BS. It's <laughs> just, it, it's just. I don't know what else to say. It's just ridiculous. Like you said, it's been 30, 40 years they've used the Cherokee name and, and they're just jumping on the bandwagon for what's popular and someone's been affected or offended. And it's just absolutely ridiculous. I mean, if anything, it's a compliment to the to the Cherokee people. Uh, yeah. well, why is it not so. seen as a compliment or yeah. as, a, as a good thing? So yeah, Jeep has has taken the standpoint of you know how how they have gone through very careful selection and have you know careful vetting and have made sure that you know whatever name badge they select, uh, it's used in in you know as as you know paying homage or uh, in in the kindest uh, of uh, of terms. You know they they it, it, the Cherokee Nation is using terms like a uh, uh, p- name plastered on the side of a car. Well, that's not really the case here, and uh, you know, there's there's some talks about you know should there be monetary 
uh, compensation for the use of the name and stuff like that. Oh Isaac, God, 95 <laughs> YJ, you know, should, should Jeep be paying the Cherokee Nation for the use of the Cherokee name badge? Where, where do you stand on this? I would say no. Um, it's, I don't know. I, I guess it's a touchy subject, but at the same time, it's, they've been using it for so long. Does it, when people think of the Jeep Cherokee, do they think of, oh, it's a bunch of, you know, scalping redskins, or do they think of, <laughs> it's a car, That's or, do coming out of the show. Of, or do they think of, <laughs> oh, it's a bunch Oops. of, you know, people living on a reservation or people owning a casino? No, they're thinking it's a vehicle. They're, I've, I'm sure the vast majority of people, when they think of Jeep Cherokee, the, the whole nation that was once named the Cherokee Nation doesn't even cross their mind. So what you're saying is uh, Jeep Stellantis uh, should be suing the Cherokee Nation for their for use using the name. of the word <laughs> Cherokee. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's certainly something to be said about precedence. And I mean, you go back to the original like Cherokee Chief uh, and do a Google search for, you know, Cherokee Chief, uh, Jeep Cherokee Chief badge, you know, and it's actually got an image of a, you know, a chieftain with the head headdress and stuff like that. That was a badge that was on the side of the original Jeep Cherokee Chief, you know, the, the full size SUV that, that pretty much pioneered the, the entire SUV market. Um, I mean, was there any complaint then of an actual likeness? of an of an indian on the side of a vehicle no no but we've got aunt jemima being taken off the shelf seriously yes. I love so, that, christopher christopher where are you, where are you on this topic I, I imagine that you've got something to say about this where, where do you stand yeah, I, I don't think it should be them trying to pay them for the cherokee name i mean because not only do you have the cherokee you have the grand cherokee well that's yep. two vehicles that have that name in it and which me owning one, it's, it's a very reliable vehicle and it should mean something to them for them to use the, the name saying that it's a, uh, a very sought after type of vehicle. Very and popular vehicle, just, very popular name too. Yeah, it's a very popular Which, name. And I think, I think them trying to tell Jeep to pay them for the name or something is, it's just them trying to go after more money or something. Yeah, I'm not sure really what the angle is here. If it's, you know, I, I, just too much social justice and, and somebody's carrying something a little bit too far. I, I'm not sure exactly where this is coming from. Uh, because again, you know, it's it's not like this is anything new. And it's not like this is being used in a negative context in any way, shape, or form. I mean, the Grand exactly. Cherokee was the, the pinnacle of... Of, of SUV performance and luxury for a long time. Um, I mean, dominating the 90s, the Jeep Grand Cherokee, I, I mean, heck, and even in the 2000s, was winning awards left and right. It was one yep. of the most awarded SUVs on the planet. So, I mean, that is not something to be taken lightly. And it's certainly not something that I would think is w you could be sh shown in a negative light in any way, shape, or form. Um, yeah, if anything, so, it's you know, putting their name out there at a, at a, in a good way. Right, exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. So, you know, I'm, I'm not sure where this is coming from or, or where it all, how it's all going to play out. Um, how about Larry, Jeep and Mo? Uh, what do you got to say about this? Well, I think everybody gets offended by everything nowadays. <laughs> well, and, isn't that the truth? And, Holy cow. And, you know, I think that if Jeep, if they open up their wallet for that, then you're just going to oh, just keep idea. writing them checks because, yeah. you know, God forbid that a Wagoneer is an offensive term or a renegade you'll you know where do you stop with that because you can find something negative or someone gets offended by just about any vehicle name out there so you're actually let me, awesome. ask, you, let me ask you a question larry if if a jeep said you know we need to change the name of the cherokee because it's just just too hot a subject we're going to change it to larry would you be offended <laughs> not really well, it'd be no. cool. You could no. go into right? the uh, I've got AutoZone. A Jeep named after me. <laughs> Look how awesome I am. Yeah. <laughs> you could go into AutoZone and say, I want a, a Larry. And they'd say, Is that a Larry or a Grand Larry? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or a Jeepy Mo. There you go. 
You, you, you know, would be know honored. It, you I, would be honored that, it, that that they took your name and put it on there. Even if it wasn't your your name, it was you know the name that you have. I mean, wasn't specifically named after you. It would still be your name that was on that vehicle. I think it's a, like I'm with Josh. I think it's an honor. Well, you know, I'm old enough to remember. It used to be when an older person used to call you a sport. It wasn't a good thing, but yet I drive one every day. <laughs> oh, well, I'll tell you something, sport. <laughs> Now, Larry, you did touch on something right. that's actually a very real concern that's actually a part of this story, in fact, because it's it, it's not going to stop at Cherokee. Uh, there's been rumors that they're going to go after um, even the uh, the Mojave trim level uh, because right. that is a trim level that's being used on, on the Gladiator and, uh, and I believe on the JL as well. Um, but uh, so Mojave is also not only a desert, but also another tribe. So, you know... Will it go, you know, obviously the Cherokee Nation doesn't have any control over that, but this could set precedence for things like that. Uh, and again, you're right, you know, Renegade, Pioneer, Wagoneer, you know, all these. Are, are we going to erase Jeep's history because somebody has uh, some bad feelings about a name right. being used in a certain way? I, you know, where you're right. The question is, where is this going to end? Greg, where do you stand on that? We you know, where, where do you think this is going to end? Where is this going to go? I wonder how many... Members of the Cherokee tribe have actually drive a Cherokee. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that would be cool. So, yeah. Valid it, question. Well, that would be I mean, a good so argument in court. W- when was the uh, first Wrangler out? Was it well, the YJs at the first, first, first Wrangler? 94? Yeah, it was for the YJs. Yeah, 89. 89. Okay, so the, so, so the Gene Company Wrangler started in 1904. So are, yeah. are, are oh. we going to have to say, uh, cut a check out to the Gene Company, too? So, you know, That's I think it's point. a bunch of, uh, oh, I think it's just a bunch of nonsense. Like my argument about Jeep. Jeep was, uh, that name came from World War II from the soldiers. So, um, Josh, I mean, it's, it's, uh, you can really dig into the, the history of these things and wonder why is it uh, copyrighted? Well, you know, the question it really uh, underneath all of this is why now? Why, after nearly a half oh, a century, you know why are you now? finally, you know, well, stepping up? I mean, they're jumping on the bandwagon than yes. everybody else. Yes. The NFL Deep pockets, did it. Maybe. The, Who knows? The, the Syrup Company did it. The Land O'Lakes Butter did it. Oh, that's right. The Land O'Lakes there's, Butter. There's I forgot schools. all about that one. There, yeah. there's, high, yeah. there's high schools that's and colleges nice all around the country are changing their names because of this political uh, uh, correctness. Welcome stuff. to the generic world uh, where yeah, it will I say... Mean, vehicle uh and be black with white letters i mean a uh, uh, black letters with uh, black outlines and it's just it, why what why would we want a generic world i mean come on yeah i, I don't because know because we you must all it. be more woke right that's it nobody can be offended nobody can be offended woke i mean you've got up. you know going so far as to you know nfl arguably uh the nation's biggest sport is it the nation's pastime no but it's arguably one of the nation's most uh biggest revenue producing sports of all time football the nfl and you've got one of the nfl's teams longest standing teams the washington redskins now changing their name to an embarrassing the washington football team really <laughs> Really? Well, that's safe. So oh, original. God. So you know, it's, it's to this point, it's, it's like you're serious. You're, I hadn't heard about that. Facebook. No, this that's real. <laughs> that's real. Well, yes. you know, they said Washington might have been a little racist there. So careful. I'm sure he so was. I, yeah, I don't. I don't know. But where where is this going to end? I don't know. Football How team. Generic. Go? I don't know. <laughs> well, and then after. After the Redskins, you got the Chiefs, and you know how about the animals? Yep. Are they going to stand up? The Dolphins tonight. You know? Football team oh, A yeah, is yeah, yeah, fighting Peter. football team B. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Pete, Pete, Pete is going to be all after ball. the Bears and the Dolphins yep. and the Ravens. Exactly. I, I mean, that's I it. I mean, if Peter has works. their way, Lions. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can see it now. I mean, if the, the turkey anybody, thing gets erased, then how about the Mustang? You know, the horses that, uh, out there. Anybody <laughs> notice that dolphin tastes like tuna? Anyway, that's a different subject. <laughs> oh, God. oh, my gosh. <laughs> so Bob's with us, two cheap Jeep guys. Uh, you know, where, where do you where do you fall on this? Are you, are you going to be, uh, you know, siding with the Cherokee Nation? Are you going to be siding with Jeep? You know, where, where do you where do you stand on this topic? I think everybody's too offended anymore. That offends me. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I'm offended by that because everybody's offended. <laughs> How dare you? Exactly. You don't know what I've been through. He mentioned he's uh, renegade. <laughs> You know, but I mean, just because, you know, you get offended over something doesn't mean that it, it has to go away. That, well, yes. that just because your feelings got hurt, 
uh, oh, doesn't mean Vegas. that that thing yeah. needs to be taken out of existence. I mean, wah, what, wah, are, wah. what are you, four? <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> So, uh, Bob, well, do you know what happens when you you know what happens when you're offended? Uh oh, I'll be absolutely no. absolutely nothing. Right. <laughs> well, used to be. Yeah, it used to be. Now now things yeah, now things go away. I guess. change I don't names, know. write checks. Award. Yeah, yeah. You get canceled to write a check. <laughs> that's what it's coming to. Uh, it seems like that's what it's coming to. Mike, what do you think? Mike uh, Banuelos, you're here with us uh, once again. I'm glad you're uh, glad you're here uh, along the camp fireside chat. Uh, what what do you have to say about this topic? Oh man, um, I, I know it's a really t- uh, touchy subject, and you know it's like I don't understand why now. You know, I, I don't. It's not like they they have a trademark on the name anyway. You know, it's, it's the name. You know, it's like people have the same name all the time. So, you know, I think it's just basically them trying to get some more money out of the out of the company. You know, I wonder if it is a monetary uh, gain. I wonder if that is the underlying motivation behind all of this or if there is some sort of a publicity stunt or, or something else. I mean, and, and again, the question is, is why now? Why now after nearly 50 years are is this becoming such a big deal? And I understand sort of why it's 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 sort of spreading like wildfire why every you know media outlet and and you know podcast clearly uh is is hopping on this topic is is because uh it, it falls into this whole social justice sort of thing which is just spreading like out of control it's literally out of control by this point um and, and, and also, it's one of those things where the it, indian motorcycle I mean, yeah. I don't know if they're going to be. That's oh, right. right. Oh, yeah. The whole that's right. The whole Indian, Indian motorcycles. That's right. It's Woo! started Harley. Yeah. Right. So uh, we go. They, yeah, it's another. One. I mean, we can go about this all day. I think you know. <laughs> yes. Uh, seriously, no, no, they can't no, no. have Indian motorcycle though, because they're not Indians. They're Native Americans. So oh. Indian motorcycle is safe. Okay. Good. Well, well, what about your Mohawk carpet? I want that that haircut that kind of stands up, you know. And you shave the sides, and you know. Oh, the Mohawk? No, I can't, I can't say that name. It's can't uh, call it that. No, I can't call. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Wendy, uh, what about what about you? What do you have to say about this? You know, first off, I think it's ridiculous, and secondly, like everybody's already said, I think the whole country needs to grow a pair and get over themselves. Seriously, quit being so sensitive. Stop it. Oh, thank you. Well, this is simply um, uh, simply a situation of uh, one kid saying, you know, my arm hurts and I, I want to get out of PE. And then the other 15 kids in the class say, you know, coach, my arm's not feeling very good either. Uh, it, it's, it's really the same thing, same exact thing, same thing, at least from the standpoint of while we're hearing so much of it. It's worked for one person or one group. So now let, let, let's try it. I mean, it, the, the climate, the political climate seems to be correct for this to actually go through. And let's, let's give it a try. Ridiculous. Yeah, I, I think some things just need to be left well enough alone. Uh, and, and this is sort of one of these things to where, you know, it's been around for so long. Uh, they have had literally, I mean, what, one, two, three, at least four different, completely different vehicle designs. Uh, under the Cherokee name, not including the Grand Cherokee line, which, you know, you've got a whole nother set of uh, vehicles there. Um, at any point during any one of the unveilings of the newest line of the Cherokee or Grand Cherokee, the opportunity was there to be like, um, we have a problem. It was never raised. And, and so, you know, anywhere along this point, there could have been a lawsuit. There could have been some sort of litigation to be like, you know, a cease and desist, something. It wasn't ever done. And I think after nearly 50 years, your time has come. And, and it, it, unless you, you know, made a big enough stink about it, during any number of uh, social justice uprisings over the last you know, five decades, you, could, you had the opportunity. You didn't take it. I'm sorry. You're a day late and a dollar short. Thanks for I playing. Agree. Yeah. So I, I, Jeep is really kind of um, playing this with kid gloves right now. The statements that have been uh, released are are sort of non statements. They're very non committal. They're very they're taking a, a, a very backseat approach, saying you know things like you know we we have uh, tried for you know for many many years to make sure that 
you know, every name that we use is researched and, and used in, in the best context as it possibly can. And, and to be honest, I mean, with the amount of awards that the, that the Jeep Grand Cherokee has won over its lifetime, um, they've done a very, very good job at that. So, you know, there, there's nothing negative here to say about, you know, Jeeps or their parent company's n use of the Cherokee name badge on any of its vehicles. I think this is a cry for attention more than anything else and an attempt at, at trying to you know, get some money out of Jeep. I mean, there's a name for that. It's not larceny. It's um, not blackmailing. It's there's there's a not racketeering. I, I, uh, social name. justice warrior, I think, is, is, well, is, that, the, what yeah, is, is the modern too. day. So I have a great idea. Now, million dollar ideas usually only come for the, the folks that we're interviewing. But this, never from this show. But this, <laughs> <laughs> but this million dollar idea uh, is going to come uh, from uh, from the show to Stellantis. Uh, change the name from Cherokee to pedophile. There will be nobody complaining yeah. about the use of. Uh, I'm a pedophile, and I don't like you using that name. It makes me look bad. <laughs> So. Well, then they never going to sell another vehicle again. <laughs> I was just going to say. No, there, there, there was, there would be, that would be a collector's item. I, I swear to you. It would be a big, big collector's <laughs> item. Could you imagine driving around in the Jeep? Especially if it was uh, the, they started selling white panel vans called Pedophile. It would be perfect. Just, it's just called the Pedo. <laughs> the, the Pedo. Uh, the show just went really downhill quickly. <laughs> yeah. No. So, okay. So, Jeep stopped using the Cherokee name in, in 2002. Uh, and, and uh, I think internationally it was, it might've been used uh, briefly in 2002, but essentially 2002 to th 2012, uh, during that 10 year period, the, the, oh, the, Jeep Cher yeah. the Cherokee name was not used. Uh, and then in 2013, they, they resurrected it again, uh, and, and, and brought it back. Um, I think at that point, you know, would have been the, the, the time to raise a stink about this. Yes, um, I but you know, n it never Never was. I raised a stink well, about it. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, you and I both certainly did. Have. Now, now, however, during that time, there there are people that are saying, well, the Cherokee vehicle continued on after two thousand one, just as a different name, and they 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 want to say that the Liberty was the continuation yeah. of the Cherokee. I, I vehemently disagree. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but, but in that, Europe, that is, that's what they were calling them, though, right? I mean, they, in Europe, they were calling them the Cherokees liberties. Yeah, I... I so, uh, in international markets, I don't think the, the rules apply quite as much because I, apparently you could also get a 2002 uh, Jeep Cherokee XJ in China. Um, right. So, you know, it, it, whatever. So, yeah, internationally, things are a little bit different here. I mean, Jeep is an American vehicle brand. Yes, it is also a global brand now, but it is, it is for all intents and purposes, an American car company. True. So, uh, you know, if they were to drop the Cherokee name and the Cherokee, then the entire Cherokee line then becomes Liberty. So you would have Grand Liberty and Liberty. How do you guys feel about that? I, I don't think liberty should be grand. I think liberty should be equal for all. You shouldn't have to. Uh, you shouldn't have to, <laughs> to to buy up to get better liberty. <laughs> right. Yes. Well, liberty for all. Well, liberty. I don't know the way the, uh, the the world's going right now. Maybe that's what we have to do is buy our liberty. Right. Again. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna take a little bit a different turn on this, and in, in my opinion on this. Now it is it is always possible that the Cherokee Nation did make their uh, dislike of the use of their name of their uh, their organization their tribe uh, made it very clear many many times but nobody ever listened to them because they were Indians living on a reservation at least that's the way it would have felt to them so now in the climate where people are listening and caring about other people's feelings. They are making their concerns known again. That's a possibility. I have no evidence for that, but I, I'm sure it, it has upset some Cherokee people. Now, the thing that I don't like is whenever people that have no skin in the game start complaining about mm -hmm. the use of things. Now, if if, if somebody is uh, you know part Cherokee, full Cherokee, whatever, and they don't like it, then then that that should be listened to. That's uh, one thing, but if Whitey McSnowflake pops up and, and starts, you know, popping off, how right. dare you use the Cherokee name, those I'm, poor indigenous peoples, and 
Stop you. I no. feel so guilty. I'm going to do this to make myself feel better. Let me let me help you. Uh, help me help you. Let me help you I down this that. well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so and there's always that possibility that the that people are upset, and it is it is very very nice that we are in a, an environment where people are uh, listening to what people are complaining about. It, it does get very old, and I do understand that it's been 50 years, the name's been used for like 50 years, but if it hurts somebody back then, and it hurts somebody in the middle of that, and it hurts somebody now, then maybe it is time to change the name. Maybe it is time for us to go to yeah, but it's not a generic like environment. Was, was calling the vehicle the N-word. You know, I mean, it's like, I can but understand, you it's know. It's not okay, a rap company. <laughs> you know, you, yeah, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I took you off on a tangent there, didn't I? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going down a rabbit trail. I don't need to go down. So that's, that's just yeah. <laughs> well, see, that's that's kind of it. If if the if the if Jeep was owned by the Cherokee Nation, then the name of the the Cherokee uh, Jeep would be fine. That's kind of the same thing with using the N word in rap. It's fine if you know you own that that word. Well, I think they would think it's fine, too, if they were getting royalties and back pay on every Cherokee ever sold. Have you heard, seen any mention of that uh, in any of this? Um, not officially, no. Uh, it's been talked about. I've seen it in, in blogs and in other discussions. Right. But as far the as the Cherokee Nation actually piping up and saying, well, how about you guys give us some reparations in the form of, of uh, you know, royalties? <laughs> 50 no, years I, of I royalties, have not please. seen that. <laughs> but, you know, but it, it's, it's entirely possible. Uh, so and 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 li- likely even, so you know it, that that could be what uh, Stellantis may decide to go with, uh, you know, versus you know dragging out through years of, of litigation and and, right. and legal fees and everything else. How much is that going to cost? Uh, in the meantime, you know, what about negative press? Is that going to hurt sales? You know, all, all oh, this yeah. stuff. So they, they may just decide, okay, well, we'll give you. It's just not you know, worth it. You know, we're, a we're quarter just of one percent. You know, on on every Cherokee ever sold. You know, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what those numbers would look like. I don't know how that would be structured. Um, any of that. Uh, but you know, well, nonetheless, one other thing it could be is just being said for political gain. Mm-hmm. You get you you get out there, you get your name out, and then oh this that's right, I heard about that. That is an issue. We need to take care of that. And then it's uh, like, why are we on reservations? Why are we in the situation that we're in? Why, how can the U.S. government fulfill what it promised us oh so many years ago? There's there's all kinds of political things that could go along with this, and you need something to build upon, some media event to build upon. So, Boy, that's a, a shaky foundation, but and I hate to see it start with a Jeep brand, uh, but I, I, it is what it is, I guess. Yeah. So anyway, just my opinion, uh, and I'm uh, and I'm saying uh, it's uh, if if they don't like it and it's the, the Cherokee name and it's their name, then I think maybe uh, Stellantis should listen to it. Maybe they should do something about that. Well, all I know is I'm not taking the name badge off of my Jeep, so. Man in a boot. I've got a picture of my Jeep that I'm going to use when I go into the parts place and say, I need a part for this. And then they're still going to say, Is that a grand? A grand. No, it's not a grand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. a bitch. I'm pulling you over the damn counter. Well, we want you guys to join the Campfire Side Chat. Please follow us on Facebook or receive notifications via our newsletter. That is the best way to get in on uh, joining in on the show, interacting with the show, and finding out the inside information is through that newsletter. It's very easy to sign up for our newsletter. Just go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact. You're going to find a link to click and sign up, and it's just as easy to unsubscribe as it is to subscribe. Don't worry, we're not selling your information. It's literally just for our use so we can send you that once a week newsletter. That's all we're ever going to send you with that as well. So I can't thank my co-hosts enough. And of course, all of the Zoom people as well. Uh, Chris, Isaac, uh, Christopher, Larry, Greg, Bob, and Mike for popping in this week and uh, and uh, you know sharing their opinions on this topic. Kind of a, kind of a touchy one. Yes, the, this one was definitely one of those that uh, was uh, could have gone any way. Uh, but I can't thank you guys enough for uh, for chiming in on and sharing your opinions on that. Uh, and don't forget, uh, guys, we do have apps. Make sure you have the Jeep Talk Show app for your device uh, and uh, for each and every week. That's it for the show for this week, my fellow Jeeper. Until next week, be sure you get subscribed to the newsletter to see what's coming up in advance. And as always, thank you for listening to the world's most downloaded Jeep podcast. Podcasting since 2010.